The Hero Association in One Punch Man is an organization that works with the National Hero Registry to divide the heroes up into tiers, depending on their power levels and popularity. Classes A, B, and C, with the highest class out there being S. And as such, S-class heroes are far beyond all the other heroes below them, with each individual S-class hero being as powerful as a small army. In a day, we're going to take a look at these overpowered anime characters and rank each and every S-class hero from weakest to strongest. So let's get to it. What's up guys, this is Danko. I do fight breakdowns, power ranking videos, or more deep dives into your favorite characters and franchises with new videos every week. So if that seems great to you, we'll sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button if you want to, or hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Hurry Perry Prisoner is an S-class hero of the Hero Association, as well as the boss of a gang of prisoners in Smelly Lid Prison. Being an S-class hero, Hurry Perry Prisoner is obviously incredibly powerful, and he's most known for his immense strength and his incredible durability. His punches are heavier than rocks and harder than iron. He's much more durable than your average hero, even being able to take strikes from monsters like the Deep Sea King. Hurry Perry Prisoner also has a fighting style called Angel Style where he increases his body mass and increases his already impressive strength, something he calls transforming. When using this fighting style, he'll often rely on his raw strength and his skill in close combat, unleashing a fury of blows and punches to beat his enemies. However, for as powerful as Puri Puri Prisoner is, he even acknowledges that he's the weakest of the S-Class heroes. He has difficulty fighting against demon level beings. While he can beat them easier after his training, he'll still have to use his special moves to defeat them. Most other S-Class heroes can defeat demon level monsters with ease. Tank Top Master, the leader of the Tank Topper army, might very well be one of the physically strongest men on the planet and he's constantly using his incredible strength in fights, throwing some seriously powerful punches, or even just hurling and throwing some things with some serious power. He believes that his tank top boosts his strength in a fight, and he's also mastered the versatility of the tank top. His fighting style mostly consists of throwing punches and incorporating wrestling moves, but he mainly relies more on his power rather than his technique. This can come back to bite him. Like in his fight against Garo, well, he was actually initially able to hold the upper hand over the hero hunter, but ultimately lost because of Garo's greater martial arts skill. Pig God is a large, morbidly obese hero who's a glutton and is just constantly eating food. The pig god can definitely put all that eating to good use. He's got the power to eat and swallow up pretty much any monster he comes across. A lot like how a snake can open up its jaws and stretch its body to eat prey a lot larger than itself, pig god can do the same thing and then digest the monster pretty much instantaneously. And because of his massive fat rolls, well, Pig God is able to absorb all sorts of blows and attacks, almost making him invulnerable. Now, Pig God is, I guess, what you could call an unconventional fighter, because he never actually tries to fight hand to hand, but instead just tries to end the fight with one move by swallowing his opponent. It's also possible that Pig God is way more powerful than this. He claims to have some sort of secret power hidden inside himself. While we have no clue what this power is, he's ready to use it against the rumored god level threat of prophecy. Watchdog Man is exactly what his name suggests. A man who believes he's a watchdog. And he's a very, 
very good watchdog. He acts like a dog at basically all times, even fighting on all fours, and like a loyal and well-trained pup, is solely interested in protecting his territory. He's in charge of protecting Q City, which is known as one of the most dangerous cities out there, and so he'll relentlessly hunt down and dispatch any mysterious beings there, ripping them apart with his bare paws as quickly and savagely as he's able. He fights more like a beast or even a monster rather than a man, but it works out very well for him. He's never lost a fight against a monster before, was even able to easily defeat Garo without even using his full strength. As an S-Class hero, you can assume that Zombie Man is incredibly powerful, but actually even by his own admission, fighting is not his forte, and he's rumored to be one of the weakest heroes around. So what makes him worthy of being an S-Class hero? Well, it's his insane regenerative ability. He's described as a man that even in death cannot die. He possesses one of the best regenerative abilities in the entire series, able to instantly regenerate any part of his body no matter how severe the injury is, ranging from broken bones to missing limbs to even being beheaded or having his organs explode. Nothing can put Zombie Man down and he'll come back from all of it. That's his true power. Now, Zombie Man isn't truly immortal. He can die if the injury is severe enough, but so far there's nothing that he hasn't been able to come back from. Child Emperor is the Hero Association's youngest hero, and as an S-Class hero, what well, can be assumed that Child Emperor is very powerful. However, his high rank as an S-Class is all due to his brain power and his incredibly high IQ. So through either tactics or his gadgets, he's capable of defeating all sorts of different monsters all on his own. He's got one of the best analytical and strategic minds on the planet, able to come up with solutions and strategies to beat pretty much every opponent. He's also got all sorts of good gadgets and weapons and robots and all sorts of high-powered tech to help him out in fights, too. He might just look like a kid. Heck, he might just be a kid. But he's also one of the most powerful heroes out there. At the end of the day, Metal Bat might just be a guy swinging around a metal baseball bat. But he is an S-Class hero for a reason. He's a powerful an intimidating fighter, absolutely brash and arrogant, but he can also definitely back it up, and he won't back down to anyone. Metal Bat is strong enough to kill many different powerful monsters and villains with just one swing from his trusty bat. He's also just as tough. Metal Bat has taken all sorts of attacks from all sorts of opponents and not gone down. While Metal Bat is a street brawler at heart, his biggest thing is his fighting spirit. He just absolutely refuses to quit. And because of that, his fighting spirit is able to push his body past its natural limits. So the more damage he takes, or the longer the fight goes on, actually the stronger and stronger that Metal Bat gets. We saw this play out in his fight with Garo. Metal Bat continued to just get tougher, faster, and a lot more durable as the fight dragged on. The best thing going for Drive Knight is his tactical transformation, where he can use his shape-changing box to create weapons and even transform his own body. He can shapeshift in an instant, so often shapeshift multiple times throughout a fight as he fights against different monsters and they can be as versatile as transforming into a robot or a flying jet of energy cannons or a motorcycle of missiles or even just creating big weapons or swords to swing around. Super Alloy Darkshine is pretty much universally considered to be the physically strongest S-Class hero. 
well above the likes of Puri Puri Prisoner and Tank Top Master. And of course, while he's got nothing on Saitama, Super Alloy Darkshine is incredibly strong and powerful. But he's also trained his muscles in a completely different way than other heroes, where his huge muscles almost act like some kind of armor around him, making him nearly indestructible. So Super Alloy Darkshine can take basically every single attack that's thrown his way and not even feel it. In short, he's considered to be the pinnacle of physical combat. Darkshine is also considered to be on par with Silver Fang as the best hand-to-hand -hand fighter in the Hero Association, to the point where he was able to keep up with Goro for an extended period of time. Kamikaze, better known as Atomic Samurai, is both an S-Class hero and a member of the Council of Sword Masters, marking his spot as one of the most powerful men on the planet and the greatest swordsman in history. Legend even says that he can cut down over a hundred enemies with each strike. And that's definitely true with Atomic Slash, Atomic Samurai's signature attack. He'll perform over a hundred quick sword slashes within a second leaving his enemies in pieces before they can even react. This move is so advanced and so powerful that Atomic Samurai is the only swordsman on the planet who's skilled enough to pull it off. Atomic Samurai is so powerful that even according to Super Alloy Darkshine, if Goro were to fight Atomic Samurai, the hero hunter would most likely die before being able to show off any of his techniques. Bang, also known as Silver Fang, is a martial arts master, the creator and teacher of Waterstream Rock Smashing Fist, and formerly a professional hero, even being ranked as the third highest ranked S Class hero of the Hero Association, and was recognized as one of its most powerful heroes. Bang and his brother Bomb are the two greatest masters of the martial arts world, and he's currently trying to recruit new disciples into his dojo, with his main targets being Saitama and Genos. Despite being past his prime, Silver Fang is still an extremely powerful fighter, and is almost considered like a god in the martial arts world. Nearly no one can compare to him when it comes to skill, and that skill allows him to easily destroy even demon level beings. His personal fighting style, Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist, is known as the perfect blend between offensive and defensive fighting, and he is such a master at fighting that the fighting style and many others have become part of his very being. Dr. Bufa, also known as Metal Knight, is a lot like Child Emperor. He might not be very physically powerful himself, but because of his intelligence and his weapons, well, he easily becomes one of the most powerful heroes out there. In fact, Child Emperor believes that the combined power of all the weapons that Metal Knight possesses is way beyond any other hero out there, and we don't even know the full extent of his weapons or military might. That's why the Hero Association is a little bit afraid of him, because if he ever betrayed them, well, he would be a huge, maybe unstoppable threat. Metal Knight constantly uses different remote-controlled robots whenever he needs to fight, which is smart because it means that he's always fighting from a safe distance, never putting his own life at stake. And these robots are also all incredibly, incredibly powerful. He was thought to be one of the only four heroes who could beat Elder Centipede, but even though he could damage the monster, he wasn't actually able to beat it. Genos, or his superhero name Demon Cyborg, is a cyborg and Saitama's trustworthy disciple, constantly aiming to become more and more powerful in his fight for justice. Genos' entire body has been replaced with combat-ready cybernetics, giving him an extreme level of strength, 
speed, and durability, and also essentially a healing factor. Because he's a cyborg, he can lose limbs or even have his body torn apart, only to come back in perfect condition, or even come back better than before as he replaces his parts and repairs himself. Genos has all sorts of weapons and different attacks that he can use throughout a fight, like his incineration cannon, his rocket punches, firing lasers from his arms, or sending out rocket-powered kicks. And best of all, Genos is constantly improving and upgrading, getting more and more powerful as the series progresses. Flashy Flash is most well known for his incredible speed and reflexes, being able to kill enemies in a flash of light and cut them down before they can even sense what's happening. During his fight against Goro, they're able to fight at such extreme speeds that a geometric structure of light itself was beginning to be created, and Flashy Flash's speed is so great He's even able to impress Saitama with him calling him kind of fast. And for Saitama and how hard it is to impress him, that's high praise. Flashy Flash has been trained in ninjutsu more than any other ninja out there, and he's able to combine his skill with his speed to become an absolutely lethal and powerful fighter. His ultimate move, the Flashy Slash, is so powerful and so fast that it can instantly one-shot almost any opponent. And before Saitama came around, no one had ever been able to dodge it. Tatsumaki, or the Tornado of Terror, is one of the most powerful heroes in the Hero Association, and is the most powerful esper in the world. Her psychic powers and telekinesis are arguably on a planetary scale, and she is feared by both villains and heroes alike because of her abilities and her short temper. At her best, Tatsumaki could lift entire cities. She's best comparable to a nuclear weapon, and nothing in the world could beat her in a frontal attack, meaning that she's considered to be the Hero Association's final weapon. Blast is considered to be the most powerful S-Class hero in the Hero Association, sitting atop the hero world. It's possible that he could beat all the other S-Class heroes at once. He was able to fight against Goro in his cosmic fear mode while he was enhanced by God, and maybe one of the only heroes who could actually fight against God. He possesses the unique ability to generate hyperspace portals, which allow him to teleport to different places or travel to different dimensions, so he can teleport himself or others or even attacks to different times or locations. In short, he's one of the most powerful heroes you've ever seen. Even Garo seems to think so. Now, according to the public, King is known as the strongest man on earth, or the hero's hero, but in actuality, he's just a normal guy. He just so happened to unintentionally have been credited with some of the heroic acts performed by none other than Saitama himself. Now there are all sorts of rumors of King's powers and abilities, that he can shake the earth, that he can destroy planets they can destroy any monster in his path. But in actuality, King's only real ability is that he's very good at intimidation or bluffing, but he also happens to be very good at video games. But so what makes King top this list then? Well, it's the fact that King can summon Saitama in an instant. And for as powerful as all these S-Class heroes are, they're nothing compared to the might and power of Saitama. So if you have the ability to call him at a moment's notice and have him fight your battles for you, well that's enough to make you the most powerful S-Class hero out there. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. 
and you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you want to go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're going to see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.